JBN to keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones. Hi, guys. Before we get into the news, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and to share the news with someone today. Now on to the news. St. Elizabeth Police in hot pursuit of wanted men. The St. Elizabeth Police, assisted by detectives from Kingston, have stepped up their pursuit of a group of heavily armed men linked to a series of robberies and shootings in the parish. One of the suspects was fatally shot during a gun battle between the police and members of the criminal network on Friday in Grossmont District. Two people, including a female, were detained and a number of stolen items were covered in the operation. Deputy Superintendent Coolidge Minto, commanding officer for the St. Elizabeth Police Division, said the cops returned to the location Sunday morning and seized another illegal gun. We continue our operations in several areas of the parish. This morning, an intelligence-driven operation was conducted in the Grosman community, in which one man was fatally shot on Friday. During the operation, a Honda Fit motor car, which was parked in the area of operation, was searched and a Glock 17 pistol recovered. We are also continuing our search for the two men who fired at the police on Friday. These men are armed and dangerous, and we're appealing to members of the public not to harbor them. We're also appealing to the men to surrender to the police and they can do so with their attorney but if not they can rest assured that myself and my team will not stop until they are caught according to a source the men have been linked to a number of serious crimes in st elizabeth including the fatal shooting of a farmer in goshen on february 25 they are also linked to the abduction of a businessman who was robbed of more than six million dollars in santa cruz several bars have been attacked by the hoodlums and a number of poker boxes stolen over the past few weeks. In the probing fatal shooting of security guard by an off-duty cop in St. Thomas, a security guard was shot dead by an off-duty policeman early Sunday in St. Thomas. Reports said that the guard was embroiled in a fight with another man around 5 a.m. when the policeman intervened. It is alleged that the security guard attacked the policeman with a knife. The policeman retaliated by shooting the guard several times. The man was rushed to hospital where it was pronounced dead. The deceased has only been identified as a 21-year-old employee of a security firm of Dalvey in the parish. The Independent Commission of Investigations is probing the matter. Bank executive freed of cocaine charges. 38-year-old bank executive Sheena Headley was arrested and charged in June 2022 after cocaine worth $85 million dollars was found in the trunk of her motor vehicle at her home, has been freed. She was freed last week Friday, following a no-case okay submission made by King's Counsel Peter Champagny in the St. James Parish Court. Champagny submitted that the prosecution had failed to demonstrate that Headley had any knowledge of the cocaine that was discovered by the police in the trunk of her motor vehicle. Headley was freed of charges of possession of cocaine, dealing in cocaine, trafficking, and taking steps proprietary to export cocaine. The allegations were that on June 15, 2022, a team of officers from the Era 1 Narcotics Police Division carried out an operation at Headley's home in St. James. During the search, 10 rectangular packages with cocaine weighing 25 pounds were found in the trunk of Headley's vehicle. The police reported that they had received information that the vehicle was being driven by a male occupant and Headley was the passenger. Upon approaching the vehicle, the police saw Headley in the passenger seat, but the driver was nowhere to be found. Headley's husband, Chad Headley, was named by the police as a person of interest and was subsequently arrested and charged. The husband, who was represented by attorney at law Martin Thomas, was rid of the charges earlier in the trial. Murders surpassed 300, but 14% lower than this time last year. The national murder toll has surpassed the 300 mark. The Jamaica Constable Report says latest serious crime statistics show the JCF says as at April 13, there had been 311 murders committed across the 19 police divisions, a 14% decline or 50 fewer murders year on year. St. James with 41, St. Catherine South 29, Westmoreland 28, St. Andrew South 25, St. Anne 21, and Clarendon 21 are the five divisions with the highest number of homicides. Poland has the fewest murders with two reports. Shootings are up 3% and robberies are up 1% when compared with the corresponding period in 2023. 
Rape incidents and break-ins have declined 37% and 6% respectively. Meanwhile, the new Commissioner of Police, Dr. Kevin Blake, last week at the JCF's first quarterly press briefing touched on the reduction in serious crimes and said greater focus will be placed on removing illegal guns from the streets. The police say there has been a 7% increase in gun seizures and 41% increase in ammunition seizures. Cops still actively probing two-year-old cocaine bust at St. Mary Airport nearly two years after a multi-million dollar cocaine seizure at Ian Fleming International Airport in St. Mary. A senior crime officer in the Jamaica Constabulary Force is adamant that arrests will be made in the matter as it has been actively pursued by investigators. The cocaine, valued at 3.8 billion Jamaican dollars at the time, weighed over 1,000 pounds. It was seized on Friday, September 23, 2022. To date, no one has been arrested in relation to the seizure, leaving many to publicly speculate about the lack of arrest and any further information on the seizure that was dubbed as one of the island's largest ever cocaine seizures at the time. When pressed for an update, at a JCF press conference last week, Fitz Bailey, the Deputy Commissioner of Police, DCP in charge of crime and the security portfolio, said investigations remain ongoing. He said local investigators are collaborating with international law enforcement counterparts on the probe. That matter is still ongoing. We are collaborating with our international partners. And as I indicated, when that matter came up first, we're going to make arrests, declared Bailey. Residents in Woodsville, Hanover, plead with relevant authorities to replace bridge vital to their survival. The feeling that they're in a world all by themselves, with no one caring about their well-being, is common among the residents of Woodsville in deep rural Hanover, faced with the harsh realities of daily community life. Apart from bad road conditions, some sections of which are completely devoid of asphalt and overgrown with thick shrubs, their latest dilemma is last year's collapse of the main Woodsville Bridge. The bridge, which spans the Cabarito River, is a major link between Woodsville and Westmoreland, the nearest economic and commercial center, as well as other sections of Hanover. According to the National Works Agency, NWA, it may be up to four years before it can be replaced, but the residents say they can't wait that long and are urging the relevant authorities to make erecting a new bridge a top priority. The bridge first began to show major signs of structural compromise in April 2022, Following a bout of every rain in the area, it eventually collapsed in April 2023. For two weeks, life came to a standstill in the community, the resident said, as you no choice but to erect a makeshift bridge. Without the bridge, we are virtually crippled. We thought about how we would continue with our daily life routine, how working people are going to get to and from work, how the farmers are going to get their crops to market, how the sick will reach doctor hospital, how needed goods and services are going to get into the community, and our only conclusion was that we had to get that bridge back up, one resident said. There are several children in Woodsville who attend schools in Savlamar and other Westmoreland communities, and some attending schools in Lucy or even Montego Bay in St. James. No one cares about us. No one cares about us rural people, he stressed. Following the collapse, the NWA and the Hanover Municipal Corporation, HMC, argued over whose responsibility it was to replace the structure. Both agencies ordered that section of the roadway closed, but the residents constructed a wooden bridge across the river to resume their daily routines. The tourist attraction, Mayfield Falls, is in proximity to Woodsville, and the tourists, visitors and touring groups venture across the makeshift wooden bridge daily to get to the falls. The draft design for the Woodsville Bridge is complete, and we're looking to issue the same for pricing by the end of 2024, Stephen Shaw, the NWA's communications manager, said last week. The schedule from commencement of procurement to award is about eight months. Funding must, however, be secured prior to any procurement. He noted that the NWA currently has a program for 30 bridges to be constructed across the island at an estimated cost of $4 billion. Eight structures have been put on the priority list at a cost of $1.3 billion, and that list does not include Woodsville, as others were ahead with procurement already on the way, he pointed out. JBN keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.